Mission Debrief. We've played every mission of the mainline Halo video games, and now we're playing every mission from the rest of the games in the franchise in chronological order. Each episode, we'll be discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts spread on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be playing the Beachhead mission from Halo Wars on the next episode. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Podcast Evolved on Patreon. This episode, we're debriefing the Repairs mission from Halo Wars. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. We get to shoot purple guys again! Yay! Yay! <laughs> I think, I, wasn't I saying on this the last mission, I was sick of the flood? <laughs> yeah, you were. So, perfect. Back to the Covenant. This is great. Last mission, so that was cleansing. Below the surface of the shield world, the Spirit of Fire was escorted through the planet's innards by a coordination of Forerunner Sentinels. However, the hull of the ship was littered with flood that followed them inside. Cutter ordered Forge and Red Team to clear the infestation, but found themselves fighting the floating robots as well as the flood. After all of the organic mess was cleared from the hull, the Sentinels retreated, and the UNSC continued pursuing Anders inside the metal planet. Now in repairs, the Spirit of Fire emerges from the innards of the Shield World and is now inside the planet. Cutter orders evasive action away from the Covenant ship that's heading right for them. The Spirit avoids a head-on collision, but takes significant damage. Cutter orders Forge to repair the ship's power core, while repelling the alien boarding party. The date of the game is February 25th, or excuse me, no, just February, February, February. Um, we get, we're still in February at the tail end. I did look ahead on the dates, so all this stuff is happening pretty closely together, but we don't have a specific date on this mission. So February 25, 31. David, this one's a good cutscene. Oh, it's really good. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's such a smooth ass cutscene. Yeah. Um. It's short. Well, it's not. Yeah. It's it's short enough, but I, I love it. Um. So pretty much, you get like a scene of like the um the kind of countryside, and uh, you see some kind of forward structures there, and then out of the blue comes um a huge big ass ship. The spirit of fire comes up right out of the ground, and it's just like instantly you're transport. You, you get the scale like straight away, of like this massive ship coming up out of the ground it looks awesome yeah. mm-hmm. um and then straight away it's kind of like oh shit battle stations and there's a covenant cruiser right in front of them and like they crash which is pretty damn cool and it kind of looks yeah. like the spirit of fire gets fucked up here yeah exactly it looks like all the damage is on their side uh but then it, it's pretty cool to like all the kind of uh, battle station all the guns kind of start popping all these deck guns are popping up and raising up out of the actual um gra- uh, like the ground sorry, out, out of the ship and start shooting mm-hmm. and bombarding the covenant cruiser yep uh it's epic the scale is huge it's really really cool quick cutscene um the pretty the mission pretty much ends there in the middle of this kind of ship on ship battle uh yep. it, you just get like i think it's uh, it's either and no, it's probably cutter. This is like forge. You still have work to do. Stay out there, and pretty much they're gonna have forge like organize or like um some repairs on the ship. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much where the mission just kicks off straight yeah. away. Serena mentions she goes, "Am I the only one that's freaked out by oh, yes. the fact that we're inside the planet? <laughs> the location you're in is awesome." Yeah. Again, I've um, I think I mentioned it before, but like this whole this whole, uh, I guess the way they present it is is cool but it's also confusing like if you're just a new to halo person like now we're inside this thing like what the hell is going on um so it's cool and it's you know as you're as you get more into more into the lore it, it makes sense um and we'll probably i think we mentioned before let's let's cover off on like what this planet is on the recap show we can talk about the the whole thing in some details but um yeah the oh the, uh, the other thing i like about this cutscene is cutter like cutter's rolling chair or floating chair whatever it is like he's like wheeling around inside the <laughs> inside the <laughs> command station um that's kind of fun to see how they they move him around in there but yeah it's short short and sweet the uh objective of this mission is to repair the power core but the power core didn't seem to get screwed up in the collision so i'm not really sure it, f- it seems like the whole 
port side of the ship got sliced off, but apparently that's fine. Yeah, apparently uh, the rest of the ship's just perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. It's just the power it's just the power core, guys. It's fine. Right. I think Which they're is, lying to us. Yeah, it's just one of those gameplay things. It's like something got messed up. Let's make it the power core. Um so what do we have here? Let's do the objectives of this mission. It's a quick mission, so we'll probably blaze through this, but the the main objective is to repair the power core. Pretty simple. The optional objectives are to keep at least one of the deck gun uh, guns alive, and I mentioned that I mentioned that the uh, the deck guns in the last mission, so that that was a mistake. They were there, but they were they were lowered into the hull of the ship. Now they're they've actually popped out, as you saw in that cutscene, and and those things can take damage. And if you if all of those um, get destroyed, then you won't get the optional objective points. The other optional objective is kill twelve spirit transports. That's always fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. And then part time is twenty or excuse me, ten to twenty minutes. It's a quick one. Scoring goals is pretty let's see. I feel like it's a decent score that we can get up to. The um, gold is thirty two thousand and above. Silver is twenty two to thirty one. Bronze is twelve to twenty one. Uh, tin is zero to twelve. Theoretical best score from the Prima Guide is 48,000. Krista, you want to start us off? 48,000. Yes! <laughs> nice work. Back to perfect. Very nice. Cheater. She did it again. I did it! <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, David, how did you do? I got smack on 32,000. No way. I was happy with it. But... Okay. Nice. So you got the gold by getting got gold, dead baby. on. Funny. I, I did well on this. I felt good about it. It's uh, 46,349, so not quite um, not quite the best score. I think I just got a, a couple points back from the, the time. I must have been a little bit over time, uh, over that 10-minute time, time point. Cool. Krista, what's in the toy box for this mission? Oh, so many fun things, plus some new things. Mm, still new stuff. We're like, what is this, the 12th mission? This, I crazy. was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, what? We get something new now? Yeah. We're, we're pretty much at the end. Yeah. Okay, so we have our hero units, Forge, the Spartan 2's Jerome Alice Douglas. We know them. We love them. We do. They're great. Mwah. Um, Except Forge. He doesn't do much. No. <laughs> he, does not. he just dies. I kind of just put him in a corner. Mm -hmm. at Man, this as soon point. as they took him out of his warthog, he just lost all purpose, really, for me. I've used yeah. him to yeah. capture buildings a few times and like yep. just take points. I'm like, you just stay there. <laughs> exactly. Generate some resources. Like he's a better marine, but he doesn't. It's, he's all by himself. Like yeah. he doesn't have his buddies, and he's got a shotgun. So it's cool having him out there. Like, oh look! But it would almost be better if we didn't control him. He just moved around on his own. That would be kind yeah. of Yeah, yeah, I guess things. so, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see that. Or if he had the ability to, like, join units and, like, buff them in the same way, like... That would be cool. You know, Spartans take over vehicles, maybe, like, Forge takes over a unit and goes mm -hmm. around with a bunch of Marines or something. That'd be cool. I love that. Speaking All of... Right. Sorry, before you keep going... Um, okay. Can... Have you tried for a Spartan to take over a Cyclops? <laughs> no, I haven't. Does that work? <laughs> I don't know. That seems pointless, but I don't maybe. think so. It's I don't think it's a quote unquote vehicle because it's built in a barracks. I I would think it's probably oh, it's an infantry good point. unit. I don't think that's a good point. Yeah. To... Okay. Blood. So we have our infantry airlock. We have marines and flamethrowers and their upgrades. We mm -hmm. have the all infamous cyclops. Mm -hmm. Beautiful cyclops. Beautiful. Uh, we have our vehicle airlocks, which has wolverines, gremlins, and hawks. What? What's a hawk? A hawk? Well, lore-wise, a hawk is a basically a uh, ground support anti-tank uh, okay. air unit. It's pretty uh, sweet looking. I love the look of it. Yes, please. It's oh, cool. It's slick it as fires all like a laser thing. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's got like the kind of hooked, like the tail kind of goes down a little bit so it's it's like built at an angle it's cool i love it and so these are the final upgrade for hornets technically mm -hmm. with Ander if you have anders around yep oh, oh really is that how that works mm -hmm. cool. that's her special unit 
Her specialty unit is uh, the ability to just completely change a unit into another unit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very special. I love it. So we have our turrets. The turrets are pretty much in the exact same place as the last mission. Mm-hmm. So y- you already know this layout. It's the same map. Uh, we have deck guns, which just kind of sit there. Yep. And again, <laughs> I mentioned that they're, they weren't there last time, but they are there to this time. And then we have our Spirit of Fire abilities. Heal and Repair, Carpet Bomb. Love them. Pretty simple. We got them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have some Covenant units. We have Ground units, Elites, Grunts, Jackals, Hunters. We have Locusts as their ground vehicles. And their air units are Spirit Dropships, Banshees, and Vampires. Mm-hmm. So all stuff we love. One little new thing. The rest we all come to know and love and keep going. <laughs> yeah, it's good to fight the Covenant again. I, I feel like uh, it was time. <laughs> the flood <laughs> As you were was, slowly dying the inside. The flood was the wearing flood. on me. Yeah, exactly. Let's fight the purple guys again. Um, but this this crew that we're fighting, because it is on top of the Spirit of Fire, so they're not sending everything. But, you know, the Banshees and Vampires, are those make sense. It, it makes sense that we're not seeing, um, I think, like ghosts and, uh, and race. Because those are more, you know, ground-based units. But the locusts, they can they can pop that on. They can crawl around on top of the ship, which is cool. Difficulty modifications. Let's see. Easy. All enemies have uh, 50% less health and inflict 50% less damage. That's pretty standard. Heroic. More covenant attacks on the power core. Jackals are enhanced. And more deck guns are initially damaged. Oh, interesting. Legendary. Uh, I, I've all but abandoned my heroic runs, by the way. <laughs> Aww. I'll get back to good choice. Eventually, good choice, Carl. <laughs> I was playing this uh, these missions way too much, so I'm just sticking to normal for now for my for my score. Legendary: All enemy units have 20% more health, inflict 20% more damage, more covenant attacks on the power core, and you begin with fewer units. I don't think this would be too tough on legendary. It's pretty simple on normal. Um, I'm I'm sure it's probably tough to get gold, but just to complete the mission is probably not too bad. All right, take us through, David. How did you do? Um, I did it pretty well. It it's a basic ass mission, and I imagine we're probably all very similar in what we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pretty much abandoned the front of the ship and focused everything in and around the power core and like this the kind of first area. Um, yeah, I pretty much like the the raised area right in the middle. Yeah, the raised area mm-hmm. is where I had a, like a large portion of my forces. I realized pretty quick that this is going to be mostly anti-air, so I built some. I built. I think I had about three Wolverines, and I put them near the reactor, and they pretty much defended, as well as nice. a couple of Marines. You kind of start off with with um the Cyclopses, and then I just slowly built the Cyclops as my resources had enough, and I pretty much spammed the Sparrowhawks. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I made. I didn't do any upgrades. I did like literally nothing else. It was literally just air units, and I just moved up my big squadron around forward and back uh i mm-hmm. actually, actually had a lot of fun just doing that uh i probably could have finished it way faster if i focused more on building cyclopses uh but i was actually just enjoying the mission and using these hawks because uh, oh, i yeah. totally forgotten all about them um until i actually started this mission i was like what the fuck is that <laughs> um <laughs> and they're shop cool. they do really well <laughs> they do really well yeah mm-hmm. and that's pretty much all i did i just had all my Cyclopses as I slowly built them up, defended by my Wolverines that took down everything, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And I moved my Hawks around when things landed and anything that kind of cropped up. Super Did you hand. build uh, many turrets? Oh, I built one or two. I think there was a period of time where I had way more resources than I was using. And I just okay. built a few random turrets. Um, I actually used one or two Cyclopses to repair some deck guns once or twice. Because uh, okay. I think there's a secondary objective to uh, keep at least one or something like that up. Mm-hmm. So I just I, re- I repaired like the two closest to the reactor just to kind of maintain those. Um, that's pretty much all I did. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic. So, yeah. I mean, that's like, it's like shortest walkthrough ever, right? Pretty um, much. Build gremlins, fix the stuff, build hawks, blow up the stuff, and maybe some turrets. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, th- yeah, not a whole lot different. I did, I did s- put some of my, um, my army in the front, be- in the front of the ship because I wanted to take out those drop ships. Did you get the optional objective for the 12 drop ships doing what you did, David? 
I think so, yes. I think I did that. Okay. So you still got that. Um, and then there's some locusts, and they, they do send pretty big waves at times across the entire ship. They'll drop them off on the front, and then um, there'll be times, too, when they, they you know, banshees are coming over, to, you know, just at the core, or they'll drop off some um, some jackals and, and some hunters and whatnot towards the core, and you gotta got to bring your, your boys back. Oh, did you... Um, did you put your Spartans in the Hawks, David, or in the Wolverines? For the first time ever, I remembered to do this. So I <laughs> wow! had to, I actually put the Spartans into the Hawks. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It I makes such a big difference. That. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. I, at one point, I think I, I had all my, my Spartan Hawks because I felt like I, I was noticing most of the waves of the Covenant coming from the front of the ship. I had them like spread out, like one on the port side, one in the middle. And then, you know, defending like the two um, airlocks and then one on the on starboard side. And so they were just kind of there and they would just move around. You know, they would kind of stay in that area, but move around and, and take out most of what would come in. They would team up on the on the drop ships. And then, um, yeah, I did some Wolverines kind of back at, back towards the power core. And then I sent I sent a few gremlin or excuse me, uh, Cyclops right away. I think maybe I had three or maybe four right away. And then I was, as I was getting closer to the end of the mission, once I got all of the dropships, all 12 dropships destroyed, then I just built a couple more gremlins, or excuse me, cyclops, and then sent them back to the power core to finish it off. Um, I did build a bunch of, of turrets along the way too, so doing the missile uh, version of those. That was super helpful for taking out the dropships, because a lot of times the dropship would kind of swoop in and those turrets would just focus on it and just take it out right away, so it wouldn't even be able to drop drop any of the, the covenant that it was that it was holding um so yeah i think that's pretty it's pretty basic i don't think i really did any upgrades either for my my vehicles i didn't feel like it was super necessary um you know you're you're kind of in a little bit of a rush but at the same time you feel like you have a lot of time i never got to the point where i felt overwhelmed from the covenant attacks i had my swarm of hawks just roaming around um forge is just kind of there he's running around a little bit I think um, the Marines that, that you got right away, I think some of those actually ended up surviving as well. The, let's see, the black box is, let's see, where did I say it? It's, it's on, on the, the hull ports. again, just like last time. Mm -hmm. Kind of off on the side by the power core. So it's on the port side of the hull. And the, and you need to use a Hawk. You need to use an air unit to get over there to grab that. And then the skull, once you get the 12 dropships, is near the front. And again, I think that's a one that you have to get with the sparrow hawk, so it's kind of towards the front of the ship, floating in the middle there. So grab those, um, Krista. Any variations or anything else that you did to get perfect? Um, I think the big thing is I didn't let any of the deck guns die. Oh, that's huge! Nice. Yeah. So the big thing is I basically made like a strike team of cyclopses. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> And they just went around and repaired like all the turrets and all of the deck guns and stuff like that, just to make sure nothing died. And you were directing them, right? Or would mm -hmm. they do that yeah. on their own? Um, if you ha if they're near something and it gets damaged, they'll automatically go over and heal it. But uh -huh. I was just kind of monitoring all my turrets. I put a bunch of turrets down with anti air so I could get the spirit drop ships pretty quickly. I noticed that one point I, I built a, a Cyclops and I didn't do anything with it right away. And then it was just over healing one of my turrets. I was like, oh, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I realized. So after the first playthrough, I realized that was a thing. So the second playthrough, I just did that and I got perfect on my second. Nice. Very nice. Um, and then, of course, you send a bunch of extra Cyclopses over to the core to heal it and then just Hawks. But... Really just making sure everything's like topped off on health really helps. Mm -hmm. Did you and notice kept... the supplies? It felt slower. Like it it comes in like ten. I, um, does it does it have to do with 10? like how many units you're destroying or something? I couldn't I couldn't oh. figure it out, but okay. I was just when I had supplies I just put it into something. Eventually I had extra. You so did, I okay. made like every turret and stuff like that, but yeah, the start, I wanted to build a bunch of turrets and maybe a couple hawks, but I had to wait around for a little while for that to happen. Yeah, but it's it's short and sweet. It's mm -hmm. easy. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty simple. Uh, the second, So this is the second mission on top of the Spirit of Fire. It's just a cool setting, right? I, I remember yeah. these missions originally and how thinking that they were cool. I think I remember the previous mission and how that was more of a pain <laughs> in the ass. And then by the time awesome. you get to this one, you, you kind of get it down. 
it's definitely a cool setting, especially the mm-hmm. idea of like a ship to ship battle going on. I thought it'd be cooler if you could see more of that, but uh, I guess there are some limitations to what they can do. But uh, yeah. the, the idea of it was then the setup of it's pretty pretty damn cool. Yeah. the The other thing to think about, I guess, is in that cutscene. You know, when the Spirit of Fire emerges, there must be some like. I don't know, some gravity stuff going on on top because it flies out almost vertically from the middle of the planet and then it then they they crash into that covenant ship. Meanwhile, I think Forge and everybody is still on top of the of the ship. So somehow they know, might have just been going too fast or something. Yeah. So somehow they they hang on on top there and they just, you know, run around from there. But it's good. Yeah, it's it's fun little quick mission. Um what's trivia on this one? Um, there's some small bits of trivia, nothing like super interesting, but uh, one or two pieces I'll read out a few. Uh, in the pre-rendered cutscene, the lines on the surface of the shield world are latitudinal, although they are longitudinal in the game. Spirit of Fire's marine complement probably required a few minutes to reach the outer hull, during which time the ships could have altered their respective headings, explaining the change in the line's orientation. The terrain on the surface also looks slightly different, likely due to the graphical limitations. Um, the Spartan units from Red Team are incorrectly labeled as Spartan Omega Team when the player selects them during gameplay. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't notice that. that. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Uh, the repairs glitch can be done in this level. This sounds mental, but uh, I don't know why you do this but anyway. When the player first has to kill all the Marines but make sure the Hornet survives, upgrade the Hornets to max, and then make the rest of the units Cyclops. When the Cyclopses are still being made, get the Hornets fully upgraded and keep on selecting Wait, outside the map. Yeah, Hornets. It's This is probably wrong. It says Hornets. It probably okay. means Sparrows. Uh, once all the Cyclops are built, player will have to have their Hornets and camera stuck outside the map. And the Mega Turret can be seen floating in midair. This may take a few what? tries to perform. Once outside the map, you're stuck out there. You can't get back. I don't know why you do it unless you want to see this Mega Turret. I'm but, so um, confused. That's yeah. crazy. Sounds mental. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last thing is the Spirit of Fire's deck guns aid you in the mission, aid you in the mission, destroying banshees and spirits. Uh, don't rely on them, however, because they have a slow rate of fire and cannot attack ground units. Yeah, that's they're pretty just, much it. They're more or less there to shoot at the Covenant ship, not, not do anything else. More for uh, aesthetic. Cool. Uh, what is? Oh, did was there? Is there some good achievements in this too? Uh, There is one achievement, I forget what it's called, it is to repair the core in like under four minutes, I think it is, it's four or five minutes. That's right. That sounds pretty cool. (laughs) It's fun. Did you do it? Yeah, uh, yeah, I ended up doing it, because I had extra time, because I got perfect on my second try, but (laughs) (laughs) all all you do is just, you don't care about the guns, you don't care about anything else, you literally just spam Cyclopses, and you just have like your maxed out population of Cyclopses. That's funny healing it it's pretty hilarious actually that's cool nice what does the black box have to say the black box let's see the stupid thing on the side of the ship for no reason <laughs> right do you, guys, do you guys look around or do you do you just look up a guide like do you try to find the black box in the mission i do try and oh, find I them i've messed it up the last two games though mm-hmm. i've kind of just forgotten about it no, I look up the guy. Go- I I look up the black box, but the skull pretty much just tells you where it is yeah. by blipping you on the map. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is this is great. Uh, excerpt from the Punishable Deeds, oh. Volume Three. Ooh, very nice. The shield world that Regret intended to activate was one of just a few that the Covenant had uncovered in the quest for the Halos. These treasure chests of technology enabled the Covenant to quickly gain access to advanced weaponry and space propulsion systems, allowing them to dominate the galaxy. Whoa. <laughs> Very cryptic. Ooh. <laughs> nice. That was it? That was it. That, that's, that's, all, that's all she wrote. Can you guys I remind like me? Beads. <laughs> Can you remind me? And I know... We've talked about this at some point, but why is no one in the for- in the shield worlds? Why are there no forerunners in there? Uh, they didn't have time to evacuate. Oh, because of the war at the tail. Yeah, the yeah they were. They That's all right. pretty much evacuated to the arcs, but had absolutely no ability to get off the arcs at that point. That's there was right. also like loads of politics involved in terms of like the Didex plan was shield worlds, and the master builder was Halos. So mm-hmm. they yeah, didn't like the so... Didex, so like they kind of rejected his plan. 
which was to build shield words, hide out there, and kind of continue to fight the flood as opposed to like kill everything around it. And so the master builder kind of won, let's say. Yeah, he basically didn't like the idea, and so no one got to go there. Gotcha. It's kind of um, a dick move. That's on weird, his though. Part. Like, no one. So it must have been mostly manufactured by Sentinels and, and the technology, or the people were, or the foreigners were there, and then they just didn't stick around because they couldn't, because of the politics stuff that was going on. Interesting. Okay, let's do our community, and we'll get out of here. Quick one today. Let's do Facebook. Yes, sorry, give me a two second dose. I forgot to scroll down when I did this. How dare you? Well, oh you gotta do goodness. some scrolly scrollies. So, Mr. Colin Perkins, admin, mm-hmm. March 23rd at 2 23 p.m. Oh, I like that. 23 23. Good job, Colin. <laughs> the UNSC <laughs> just dropped off a fully functional Hrunting Mark 3B exoskeleton, aka Cyclops, at your front door with no questions asked. What do you use it for? Question for Mission Debrief, Hill Awards, Repairs, Mission. Uh, that's a cool ass picture, by the way. Looks so mm-hmm. bulky. Um, we got a few few comments in here. AJ says, getting some toilet paper back from the hoarders and handing it out to the seniors. Nice guy, AJ. Uh, Rob says, this is my hazmat suit. Jared says, skipping traffic. Jesse, <laughs> maybe to destroy the micromanaging dicks I have to work for. That sounds fun. Uh, Matthew uh, you know that guy who ran a muffler shop and got screwed by his own town so he built an armored bulldozer and bulldozed the town that ruined him what the hell I'd have loved this thing and I'd post it on the front door and never have to worry about theft that's crazy Uh, Dave says out comes the list on goes the heavy metal it's time to settle a few scores some revenge posts in here guys Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, right says, angry folks Remember the episode of X-Men where Colossus was hired to bulldoze a building and all the workers despised him? Yeah, I want that hate when I rock that mech. <laughs> so specific. <laughs> but I do remember the episode because X-Men is amazing. Uh, Lance says, get some toilet paper and then go to the Winchester and wait for this all to blow over. That's an excellent quote from World's End. Um, <laughs> Patrick says, first I try and hide it because our lovely government would be all over it. Then probably showing it off at homey and then finally finding a way to play Halo 5 from within the suit. <laughs> uh, Thomas says, I use it for hunting down that pesky alien queen that she's in the hangar bay of my spaceship. Power loader, armor, eat your heart out. It's time for Cyclops to shine. That's what I think of as well, Thomas, when I see this is the heavy bot loader from the Aliens uh, franchise. Um, so mm, there's a cool fight yeah. scene at the end mm-hmm. of Aliens 2. Yeah, totally. Uh, Brad says, what do I use it for? Whatever the hell I want. It's a motherfucking Cyclops. Who's going to stop me? <laughs> uh, Storm says, renovate my house. Then go renovate the Walmart I work at so we can have some more space. And totally demise the car that was always taking my parking spot at work. Then go to the anime convention. <laughs> show off my Cyclops to all those who be wearing Gundam costumes. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Make people feel says, real bad about themselves. Pretty much. Uh, imagine the Cyclops, huh? I guess I'll steal Jean Grey from Wolverine. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, and finally, Grego says, sell the U.S. Army. I'm set for life. There we go. Very Perfect. nice. Thank you, Facebook. What's Discord have to say? Oh, some interesting. A lot of toilet paper jokes. Like, <laughs> a lot of toilet paper jokes. Topical. Busting through the riots to get toilet paper at Tesco's was blue calcs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Hector says an anti-coronavirus suit for me to go outside with an unlive panic buyers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, Jedi Spartan 38 says place it outside my nearest shop and stop people from stockpiling toilet paper. Yep, that seems to be a trend. <laughs> Minmax speech says dance party. Yeah, I like that. The first good one. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet paper jokes are funny, guys. Just a little overdone. Uh, Axie I says, "I." Someone listening to this episode like a year from now is kind of. They're like, not going to understand. Why well, they the toilet paper all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Axie says, uh, "I bring havoc and destruction to Florida beaches and send the spring breakers home just for the lulls." Those silly spring breakers. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Spartan B312 says, use it to get to school, and then the bus won't be late by 15 minutes, and I get to walk home in a Mac? 
wing win win guys and he says i'm the best host thank you (laughs) (laughs) uh matt says to get to work because there are too many damn people on the road during a supposed lockdown also to help enforce the lockdown texas style oh boy Ooh. (laughs) uh dizzy bumper says i figure i could finally get around to doing that kitchen remodeling i've been putting off big cyclops suit makes them demolition easy it mm-hmm. also named the suit Daddy. Oh, God. Very nice. That's Bioshock, right? <laughs> I mean, Big Daddy, technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Barrett King says, uh, I would use it to fix my car from anything simple, like a tire taint change to a new engine, because I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Because I don't know what I'm doing with cars. So you might, end, you might end up breaking the car, to be fair. But there's got to be some, like, like fix button on the inside right and then you don't do anything <laughs> just an instant fix button yeah. oh god i need a fix button for my life where do i get it <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it that's the what the discord has to say very nice thank you all who comment every week we love it love to hear your thoughts and that participation that will do it for our debriefing of the repairs mission from halo wars on the next episode we'll be covering beachhead send us your thoughts at podcast evolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. Evolved. Evolved.